रामाय राम भद्राय राम चंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय प्रति ए नम सुंद्रकांड चैप्टर नंबर फोर्टी मारुति कंसो सीता कंटिन्यूड द रेसिटेशन बिगिन्स नाउ Her spirits rose high at the words of encouragement that Maruti gave expression to and the lady Sita once more addressed herself to him in words conducive to her well-being and happiness even as a corn half ripe and about to yield golden fruit caught in the grip of the deadly summer heat and drought recovers its life strength and beauty when the god sent rains gladden it again I at first reveled at the enjoyment of everything that the heart could wish for in the company of my beloved Rama. Then I had to pass through a streak of ill luck and unspeakable misfortunes that made me desire to take my life into my hands. Then you came to me, your words, like unto the waters of immortality, gave me back the life I had almost counted as lost. I pray you out of your boundless compassion to so plan that I bless my eyes with the sight of that ideal man and king and hold him in my arms weak and emaciated with sorrow and grief as long as my heart could desire ask him to call back to memory those incidents of the far past known to ourselves alone when he sent the brahmastra after the puny crow and deprived it of its right eye Ask him to remind himself of that day when we two were all by ourselves on the slopes of a hill, and he chanced to observe the beauty mark of my cheeks, effaced somewhat, and hastened to replace it by another of the ore of Manusila. My Raghuvira, like unto Indra, Varuna, and the other regions of the quarters, put up calmly with unspeakable insult from the hands of a wretch of a Rakshasa, who abducts his beloved wife and holds her in durance for months together. I wonder how he can do it. Tell him. I have till now preserved most carefully the crest jewel that you so lovingly made a present of to me. It solaced my dark hours even as if I had you by my side. And now I send it back to you, the only source of life and light to me. Hence I cannot, even if I would, keep my hold upon life, suffering as I do, from being torn away from your side most cruelly. taunts insults injuries that any other would have succumbed to from these dreadful rakshasas around me all this and more have I borne patiently only in the hope that you would at any cost deliver me and in the fond belief that you hold the lives of your foes in the hollow of your hand I cling to dear life but for the short space of a month if I fail to meet you by that time you may count me dead Ravana is cruel beyond belief he is frightful to behold and I can never bring myself to lift my eyes to him and should I ever hear that you too are slack in your efforts to come to me you may take it from me that the next moment marks my exit from this world Hanuman listened to the lady Sita as she poured out her heart to him in the midst of blinding tears. He hastened to render her meet to reply, "Noble lady, my lord Raghuvira has not yet come only because he knows not where you were kept, and the grief in consequence almost overwhelms him. The moment he knows of your whereabouts, he will take the necessary steps to deliver you from this dark prison house. I swear this by the God of Truth Himself, and Lakshmana, His twin self, the soul of His soul, has no place in His heart for any other thought when he beholds Rama sunk in grief. Well, it is all over and behind us now. I congratulate myself upon having come at you after all this trouble and danger. You have no call to grieve hereafter. This moment has struck the death knell of all your dark and unhappy past. Those noble brothers whose shafts bring the message of relentless death to their foes, those lords of men are all eager to have a sight of your fair self. Their arrows will reduce this lanka to a heap of ashes. 
Ravana and his dark brood will very soon be a thing of the past and the brothers will lead you back to Ayodhya in joy and glory. I pray you, gentle lady, remind yourself of any other sign of recognition in your past that would be most familiar to him and gladden his heart. And to him replied Sita, those that I have entrusted you with are the best of the kind. The sight of this jewel of mine will bring to his heart utter trust and confidence in you and in your message. Then Marathi secured about him the jewel, saluted the Lady Sita in humble reverence, and his face bright at the consciousness of his purpose well accomplished, prepared to return. Sita beheld him in wonder and joy as he grew and grew in form, in strength, in speed, and was about to spring aloft to take his course through the skies. Alas, how shall I keep my hold upon life now that I have parted with the jewel that I looked upon even as I did upon my beloved and given leave to this bringer of hope and peace to go back? Heaven knows when this faithful emissary will meet his master. Heaven only knows when my Lord would be here. Alas, when would my grief-stained eyes bless themselves with the sight of my beloved? When would the moment come round that marks the end of my troubles and sorrows? Her face grew worn. Her limbs would not support her. Hot tears blinded her eyes. Her voice was choked with sobs, yet she managed to say, Anjaneya, Carry my kind inquiries to Rama and Lakshmana, strong and brave as mighty lions. Convey my respects to Sugriva and his ministers and the other monkey hosts. I lay upon you a supreme duty that he should at any cost lift me up from the depths of grief in which I am sunk. Seek his side and acquaint him with this sharp and poignant grief that tortures me. Tell him how these rakshasis load me with taunts, insults, and shame. May all good go with you on your way, and may you ever come out victorious to your obstacles. Thus did Anjaneer acquaint himself full well with everything about Lady Sita. He laid her message to his heart. He saw his purpose accomplished thoroughly, and he set about to go back with a glad heart. But he bethought himself that something yet remained to be done, and he went back north to think it out carefully. Mangalam Goshlendraya Mahaniya Gunavati Chakravarti Dhanurjaya Sarva Bhomaya Mangalam